Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is We All Juggle Knives. This is the latest in my series of budget fixed blade reviews. This is the Millspec Tactical H1216. All right, let's talk price. Now, a fair, reasonable price for this knife would be about $20. If you can get it for significantly less, that would be a bargain. Amazon has been doing some crazy things. I've seen them sell this from anywhere from $25 to literally $9. And I don't mean stores on Amazon, I mean Amazon itself from their warehouse. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I think they have some computer program that just really quickly raises and lowers the prices to try and get every single penny of profit they can. So my advice to you, wait and observe until it hits a pricing low. This knife has a ring pommel, G10 handle scales, it has a true full tang, and really this is an overbuilt knife. It's extremely durable, sharpening choil there, uh, it's got a swedge, very attractive stone wash. The steel on this is 440A, that's perfectly acceptable for, you know, the low price. Yes, it is made in China like every other cheap thing. Uh, if you want USA made stuff, check out my Bark River review, my Emerson, my Browse Blades plenty of USA made stuff, it's just expensive. But you see, for what this is, it is actually a good knife. Now the ring pommel, not for your finger in my opinion, it's just to skeletonize the handle and it's an oversized uh, lanyard hull. Right? But you know, there you see the full tang. This knife is really in contrast to what you would call the fast and light approach. If you want something that's fast and light, right, you can get a Mora for a very good low price, but I'm not gonna compare those two directly because, I mean, this is a completely different philosophy. As I said, it's an overbuilt knife, meaning it's something you would carry if you absolutely do not want your knife to ever break. Maybe you've broken a couple knives before and you're just sick of it. So the overbuilt knives, they do have their place. They're not the majority because most people are just, you know, going casual camping. So you don't need an indestructible tank for that. But they do have their place and there's many uh, companies that make their money with that philosophy. Okay, some usage footage. Here I am just removing some bark from a stick. Now one thing about this knife, well, first of all, it's 440A and the... Uh, the blade length is four and a quarter inches. All right, so it didn't come that sharp out of the box. You see, this is the factory edge. Now this would be going through this wood a lot better and more efficiently uh, after sharpening, but I wanted to show you the factory edge. You know, I gotta show you the good and the bad so you can make your decision. But if you get this, you know, because it's a budget blade, you're gonna have to be willing to put some work into it, meaning sharpening it up to your standard of sharpness. As it comes, you know, it's only medium sharp. It doesn't really surprise me since this is as low as $9 sometimes. There's some gnarly firewood. All right, there's me uh, murdering a log. I think my camera got bumped because I was supposed to show the tip, but you get the idea. I did beat this knife up a lot, uh, tested the grip as well. Here's some batoning. I prefer to baton with a longer knife, but this is not a review of a longer knife, so there you go. All right, so that baton's not very heavy, so I had to hit it a few times, but it did split well because it, it's thick with a pronounced bevel. All right, now you see there that had a knot in it, so I had to pound it through. But yeah, I mean for I mean for a low priced knife, this is pretty durable. I found the handle to be really ergonomic, just the thickness was perfect for uh, my size hand, which is medium large for a guy. So long story short, it's durable, but you need to sharpen it. All right, now uh, 440A, don't be afraid of that steel. I actually have some really nice K-Bar hunting knives that are 440A. The whole point of that steel is that uh, it's easy to resharpen, right? That's why for hunting knives, you usually touch up the blade before or after each use, right? So ease of resharpening. And of course, that steel is another reason that the price can be so low. All right, so appropriate for the price point. All right, so what did we do with this knife? Uh, well, we batoned some kindling, we made some shavings, we uh, debarked a few sticks, and we murdered a log. Uh, so yeah, it'll get the job done. Like I said, would have been a lot better um, after sharpening. 
The handle was real comfortable, and, you know, the good thing about this knife, it has a true full tang, and not only that, but the tang is fairly thick and fairly wide. That's really what sets this apart from uh, a lot of other knives in its price point. You know, there, there's no BS with the tang. Now, if you're wondering, what is the overall quality level of this knife? If I can compare it to something, I would compare it to uh, knives like these two Shrades. These are the uh, SCHF 13 and 14. And the quality level on this knife is pretty much on par. It's pretty much identical to the quality level of these Shrades. So if you're cool with those Shrades, you'll like this. Uh, in fact, uh, due to some similarities in the uh, designs and between other products from these companies. I think these might have all been made in the same factory, which is not bad because those shades go for about $25 and are worth it. One reason that this is a bit less expensive than those shades is because the sheath is pretty much the cheapest possible sheath you could, you could get. And normally I would be the first to complain about that, but like I said, because the price on this has gone so low sometimes, it would be worth it even if it had no sheath, you know, if you can get it for the lowest price. So yeah, it's a bad sheath, but I can't say it's surprising for the price point. So overall opinion on this knife, you know, if you were to compare this knife to other knives in the price range, which is uh, apparently between $9 and $25, this is actually a lot better than most. I mean, most budget fixed blades, don't even have a full tang. It's like some sort of uh, welded rat tail tang or something. What attracted me to this was you could actually see the real full tang. It's attractive. You get the G10 material on the handle scales, and basically it's just one of the better designed and built knives in this price range. All right, now this was sent to me on request. Uh, you know, if they had not sent it to me, I just would have purchased it myself because like I said, I've seen it for $9 and it's definitely worth more than $9. So should you get this? You know, it really depends on the price you can get it for. But yes, if you're on a budget, this is a good option if you want to, want to go the overbuilt route. And as for budget knife reviews, I'm going to continue doing them and doing lots of them because overwhelmingly that's what people request. And even though I am a collector too, I don't lose touch uh, with that. All right, this has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.